decades, Voyager 2 has been drifting quietly into the abyss, far beyond the reach of planets, past the cold edge of the solar system into the great unknown. A phantom ship led by Earth's last whisper in the 1970s. We imagined that it would vanish slowly, its signal dimming into cosmic noise, but it didn't. Just recently, it sent something back not just data, not just a routine transmission, but a message that made NASA scientists stop. A sudden spike, an unforeseen change, a clear line crossed. And with it, confirmation of something humanity had long feared but never dared to say out loud, the edge of our solar system is not a blur, it is a wall. And beyond it, something changes. When Voyager to crossed the so-called heliopause, the boundary where the sun's influence ends and true interstellar space begins, it was expected to be gradual, almost poetic. Scientists believed the solar wind would disappear into the space between stars like a slow dissolving mist. But what Voyager to detected was the opposite. The transition wasn't slow, it was sudden. One moment it was inside the sun's protective bubble, the next it was beyond it, in an environment where radiation spiked by over 70%, plasma density jumped, and the very structure of the magnetic field changed. It was like opening a door and stepping into an entirely different room. The readings were not subtle, they arrived abruptly, sharp, as if a membrane had been pierced. What stunned researchers most wasn't just the presence of a boundary, but the precision of it. The sun's heliosphere, once thought to gently bleed into space, was now revealed as a distinct, shield-like structure, one that had been holding back the chaos of the galaxy. And as Voyager to stepped through, it confirmed that our solar system isn't just floating in space. It's protected by something. Until now. For decades, the idea of the heliosphere was considered theoretical a bubble of magnetic and plasma energy shaped by the solar wind. But Voyager showed it wasn't just theoretical, it was crucial. Inside this shield, conditions are stable. Radiation is relatively filtered, space weather is manageable, and there is less of it. Yet, from the moment Voyager to emerged, that changed. The data showed intense, chaotic magnetic flux, energy from particles, and dangerous levels of galactic radiation. Suddenly, the solar system appeared not as a fortress but as a lonely outpost, and stepping beyond its walls meant entering an unregulated frontier. The smooth curves and soft boundaries that existed in textbooks were gone, replaced with hard numbers, jagged spikes, and terrifying implications. Voyager 2 wasn't just drifting anymore, it was being bombarded. The sun's magnetic field had been aligned almost perfectly with the interstellar field, a phenomenon no one expected, one which raised questions about how the galaxy's own structure might be shaping the space around us. The heliosphere wasn't just a field, it was a threshold, and crossing it had consequences. One of the most shocking revelations from Voyager 2's data was that the heliosphere isn't fixed. It breathes. It moves. It expands and contracts based on the sun's 11-year cycle, changing its shape and thickness as solar activity rises and falls. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 neither crossed at the same location nor at the same distance, and the differences were not random. They were shaped by the tempo of the sun. This indicates that the boundary of our solar system isn't a neat sphere. It's distorted, almost comet-shaped, with pulses that ripple outward like the breath of a giant organism. At times, it stretches, at times, it jerks back. And if the solar wind weakens, the boundary draws closer to home, allowing more galactic radiation to enter. If it strengthens, the barrier pushes outward, shielding us more effectively. The implication is disturbing, Earth's protection isn't permanent. It shifts. It can fail. And Voyager 2's sharp transition into the galactic medium revealed just how thin that veil truly is. The cosmos beyond isn't empty, it's violent, unpredictable, and much closer than we imagined. In 2019, something strange happened. Voyager 2, reliable for over 40 years, went silent not for long, just for a few hours. But in those hours, every instrument went offline. No orders were issued from Earth, no updates were sent. 
Then, as mysteriously as it went dark, the spacecraft rebooted, recovered. The official reason was possibly aging hardware or a minor software glitch. But buried in the technical reports were notes on unexplained electromagnetic spikes right before the blackout changes in the magnetic field, sharp surges in particle energy, albeit insignificant in comparison. The question that persisted was not simply what caused the glitch, but what Voyager to had just entered. Some researchers suggested it might be a pocket of high-energy plasma, like a ripple from a distant supernova or a shock wave from another interstellar event. But others quietly wondered whether Voyager had crossed into a layer or zone we didn't even know existed one with properties so foreign that its presence couldn't be predicted. In that case, it was more than just a system glitch, it was a reaction. When Voyager to stepped outside the heliosphere, it began recording fluctuations in radiation levels and plasma density that didn't align with anything previously modeled. These weren't just one-time spikes or occasional irregularities. They were dynamic, persistent, and patterned, almost like a weather-like phenomenon. The idea that space beyond the sun's reach might contain something akin to weather was previously thought to be poetic exaggeration. But Voyager 2 was registering waves of sudden high-energy particles, directional changes in the magnetic field, and surges in galactic rays that echoed with a strange rhythm. At first, scientists attempted to connect these disturbances to known solar events, flares, or coronal mass ejections that might have echoed through the heliopause. But when those timelines didn't match, they turned their attention outward. The patterns began aligning with distant galactic phenomena, possibly remnants of supernovae or the collective force of enormous stellar winds far from our system. It was as if Voyager to had entered a region alive with activity, a kind of interstellar sea with invisible currents and unseen tides. At this point, the spacecraft was beyond the sun's barrier, completely exposed and afloat in a storm we never anticipated finding. One of the most surprising outcomes from Voyager 2's crossing was the near-perfect symmetry between the sun's magnetic field and the galactic magnetic field beyond. This discovery left theorists in a panic. For decades, models predicted turbulence at the heliopause, a clash of magnetic directions, a blending zone where solar and interstellar forces would transform into chaos. But that's not what Voyager found. The transition was smooth, too smooth, as if the fields were already synchronized. Two possibilities emerged, both alarming in equal measure. Either the region beyond our solar system had been shaped and bent by the sun's outflow over time, gradually evolving into alignment, or the region itself was inherently aligned. That would mean the sun and its surrounding interstellar neighborhood had evolved within a magnetic harmony, one that possibly spans a much larger section of the galaxy than previously believed. It also indicates that cosmic rays could enter more easily when fields are aligned, creating efficient channels into our solar system during quiet solar cycles. This wasn't just a magnetic surprise, it was a fundamental shift. The concept that the structure of the galaxy may already account for, or even plan for, the sun's magnetic reach poses a challenge to every type of interaction between stars. Suddenly, space didn't seem so chaotic. It seemed organized. As data continued streaming from Voyager 2, a whisper began circulating among theorists and mission insiders, one they were not prepared to record but could not overlook. The heliosphere could be more than just a boundary. What if it acted as a checkpoint? The sharpness of the transition, the perfect field alignment, and the regular spikes in radiation across both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 suggested not only a physical interface but a responsive one. Some proposed the boundary might be adaptive, adjusting its intensity or location in response to pressure from both directions. But a more controversial idea emerged that the boundary itself may function as a type of galactic tripwire, a location where, upon entering, objects are measured, exposed, recorded. This was no claim of aliens, no assertion of intelligent design, but simply the observation that the space Voyager had entered felt structured, layered, reactive. 
And if that is true, it would mean every object that exits the solar system doesn't just leave the sun's territory. It announces its presence to the galaxy beyond. Voyager to may have unintentionally sparked more than just measurements. It may have sent a signal, revealing more about us than we ever intended. Attached to Voyager 2 is a message, a golden disc etched with humanity's greetings, sounds, music, and diagrams a beautiful attempt at interstellar diplomacy. But within that disc are specific instructions, how to find Earth, how to read the disc, how to understand who we are. For decades, this was praised as a sign of hope. But based on what Voyager to found, some now see it differently. If the boundary that separates our system from the galaxy isn't a gradual fade but a well-defined edge, if it reacts, if it watches, what does it imply about attaching a map to our home on the very probe that pierced that edge? Are we extending a hand or revealing a vulnerability? Every time Voyager descends a signal, we confirm our intelligence, our technology, and our location. And if something out there is listening, or worse, responding, then the golden record may become more than a message. It may be an invitation, one we can't take back. Voyager 2 wasn't supposed to survive this long. It wasn't meant to send back revelations that would shake our understanding of the cosmos. Even so, now, decades after its launch, drifting through the cold silence of space, it has crossed a line that was never meant to be crossed so easily. And what it found wasn't the peaceful emptiness we once imagined. It found change. It found pressure. It found structure. It confirmed what many quietly feared. Our solar system is not wandering aimlessly through a void. It is shielded. And outside that shield, the rules begin to bend. Radiation intensifies. Fields align. Particles shift. Time and space distort. The boundary isn't soft, it's sharp. And what lies beyond it feels less like a sea and more like a gate, a threshold into a realm that doesn't care about Earth's blue skies or our gentle sun, a realm where apocalyptic calamities rage and fields dance to frequencies we've only just begun to understand. And there, the golden record persists, a magnificent, reckless symbol of our optimism. Sailing into deep space with our coordinates, our biology, our identity carved in gold a greeting or a flare sent across a line that we now know is far more complex, far more reactive than we ever dreamed. So now the question lingers in the silence between stars, was Voyager to merely an explorer, or was it a signal? Comment below with your thoughts. Do you believe Voyager to discovered something unnatural at the solar system's edge? Is the heliosphere just a physical barrier or something more? If this video made you rethink the boundaries of our universe or sent a chill down your spine, subscribe, hit the bell, and share this with someone who is willing to.